I will be talking about that. But first of all, uh, I will be talking about the whales and dolphins uh, in the Maldives. Uh, and I'm sure many of you are very familiar uh, with the species here. Uh, there are 23 known species uh, in the Maldives. Uh, there's nearly as, between 90 and 100 in the world. So roughly a quarter of all the world's species uh, occur in Maldivian waters. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about all of them. There's rather too many. Uh, so I'm going to concentrate on a handful and, and give a little bit of information about some of the behavior uh, and associations uh, of those. But first of all, um, I just asked by the, the dean, uh, I've just been welcomed by the dean who asked me how long I'd been here. In fact, I've been working in the Maldives for 40 years now, 40 years this month. Uh, and of course, during that time, I've had the pleasure to work with uh, many uh, Maldivian colleagues. I can't mention more, but I'm going to mention uh, one because um, as a foreigner working here, I don't work alone, I work alone. I'll also mention uh, Dr. Founding director of what is now the Maldives Marine Research Institute, uh, and a formative figure in, in my career here in the Maldives. But moving back to the, the dolphins and the whales, of all the species of whales and dolphins in the Maldives, this is the common one. This is the spinner dolphin. Spinner dolphin. It is the hyper abundant dolphin of the Maldives. There are thousands, tens of thousands of spinner dolphins in the Maldives. Uh, and if you're out on a boat, uh, and you see dolphins, it's probably this one. This is a very common one. Beautiful little thing. It's a small dolphin. It gets up to about five long, long, maybe a little bit longer. 1.5 meters, 1.6 meters, if you're metrically inclined. And, and they occur in groups. They're very social animals. animals. If you see if them, they're always in groups. Uh, uh, if you see less than six together, six together something from six or more, 10, 10 20, 20, 50, 50 100. Because they are small animals out in the big ocean, and bigger and things, bigger things might come might up, things like sharks. And there's a couple of bits of their behavior I'd like to mention in particular. The scientific name for this dolphin is Stenella, it's a group of dolphins, Stenella longirostris, longirostris. It means long beak. And as you can see, they do indeed have a long beak. And they need a long beak because they have about 200 teeth. 200 tiny little teeth squeezed into that, that long mouth. Uh, and they need the teeth uh, because they feed on small fish. fish. Most, Most of the cetaceans in the long feed on, feed on fish, fish or squid. Or squid. And if you feed, and on, if you fish, feed on fish, small fish, small fish uh, you want to make sure it goes down the right way. way. You have to you swallow, have to swallow it, it first. first. If you swallow it tail first or sideways, it's going to get stuck and you want to bite. So they haven't got hands, so they manipulate their beak, lots of little teeth to handle it and swallow it head first. Those species that feed on squid, you'd think to handle a squid, you'd uh, slippery things, so you'd need your teeth as well. Uh, but it's not uh, the case. If you feed on squid, you can just slurp it down, and it doesn't seem to matter to handle it head first, tail first, sideways. It'll slip down very nicely. But for fish eaters, lots of teeth to handle. And these ones feed on small fish. Small fish that live out in the ocean. In the deep ocean. Now, if you ask a fish out in the ocean, you have a you problem. Have a problem. The problem is anything, anything bigger, bigger than you is going to try and eat you. Eat you. All the tunas out there are trying to try and eat you. And, and there's no way to hide. hide. On, on land, 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 if you're a small, a small creature, you hide behind a tree or a hole. Not so much to see. There's no way to hide behind. So many of the small fish get around this problem by sinking in the dark depths during the daytime. When it's light, they go deep. When it's dark, the tunas don't follow. It's too cold, it's too dark. But there's no food there's no food there, so they have to come up at night, night to, feed. to feed. The food the is food generated at the surface, surface of the sea by the sun, the sun energy, energy and the sunlight. sunlight. So the food's at the food surface, surface, but so are the predators. So, so the small the fish, fish, they sink they down in the day and they come up at night. And that is where the dolphins come in. The dolphins, of course, pull sounds for communication and echolocation. So they can find these small fish at night when they come in the surface. Hunt them, catch them, get the right bird, and swallow them head first. Which leaves, Which leaves them with the daytime, with the daytime to do to other do things. Other things. Uh, and and they, don't they don't have to be out in the ocean to suck down, down, down out of, out of, out of sight. sight. There may be so large predators out there. So if so they are near an adult, they like to come in towards the adult. 
uh, and very uh, often, often if you, you see dolphins, see dolphins in the morning, the morning uh, that would be the point of into the entrance. Maybe some people live in the gate, uh, and the ferry every morning, and quite and often you see dolphins, it'll be really spinning off and coming into the entrance. Uh, normally, uh, normally they go back to the so they leave sometimes, they get highly excited when you have them in charge of the other things like this. And what they do is they find the channels, the candoroid, and they come in and here's some data that they've been doing several years, showing the distribution of spinodolphins, the occurrence of spinodolphins in the channels, in the candoroid. And in the morning, this is, so this is along the bottom is the time of day, five o'clock, very few sightings, I don't get up really at that time, so it's possibly a slightly biased sample, uh, but from five o'clock in the morning through till seven o'clock in the evening, and there are two big peaks of occurrence of dolphins in the channels. And the colors, the light gray, is they're going into the atolls in the morning, and the dark gray, they're coming out of the atolls in the afternoon. So very simple. Recording over a number of years the occurrence of dolphins in channels and which way they're going, and you can see very nicely their diurnal pattern of behavior, their daily, daily pattern of behavior. In the morning, they spend the middle of the day sleeping, 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 inside, sleeping inside, inside the atolls, the atolls. and then in the afternoon they wake up and they come out. And when they wake up, they're rested, they're quite playful, and that is when you are most likely to see them, for, so they're jumping around. And you're particularly likely to see them next to long reefs. Now, they feed in the ocean at the night, so they want to be inside, inside the atoll day. They have to they come have through to come the channels. channels. And if you have, if an, you have area, an area of an atoll, an atoll, atoll where there are lots, there are lots of channels, channels, channels lots of small reefs, small reefs, they can come they can in anywhere, anywhere and see on the eastern side, two particularly long reefs. So any spinner dolphins feeding on the outside there, when in the morning they come into the reef, they'll follow the reef round to the first channel. So this acts like a funnel, funnel concentrates, concentrates the dolphins. dolphins. So the, so the uh, uh, channel north, 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 near Madurai, uh, then, uh, then in the middle, middle Mali, Mali, and down the down south, south uh, near, near Kolofasol, Kolari. Uh, these uh, these kind of always, always, always nearly or nearly large numbers of spinner dolphins because they are concentrated by the long length of reef. Coming in the morning, going out in the afternoon, as they go out in the afternoon, they're quite active. Uh, and this is when you see them spinning most often. Uh, they can spin any time of day, uh, but after they sleep, they're feeling quite active, so particularly in the afternoon and the evening, they spin. And the question is always asked, why do they spin? Uh, and the simple answer is nobody knows. However, that doesn't stop people from coming up with ideas. And there are two main, two main suggestions, two main hypotheses. Uh, one is uh, one to do with communication. communication. Spin it off into the living groups, they have to stay together for safety and numbers, they want to stay together when they're so fun. But out in the ocean, it's quite easy to get lost, so you need to make a noise, and they can hear you, and you can hear them and stay together. And by jumping and spinning and splashing, you make a noise, the other dog will hear you, you are in the other And also, as you splash and come down to the water, you draw down the train of bubbles, the tiny air bubbles. And air bubbles in the water are a very good reflector of sound. So this so bubble tray, train, the dolphin is turn and echo a very good idea of where you are. And when they when don't, they they don't know, know where they are, so it helps to keep us all together. Fantastic idea. Fantastic idea. Fantastic idea. Fantastic However, you don't have, you to, don't have to spin. spin. You, can you can just jump and splash. splash. So why do so they why spin? Other dolphins jump and splash. Without spinning. What is it about spinning? Going through more than 300 feet of the And the answer is probably to do with these colors. Remoras, Atamas, Atamas, uh, Remoras, suckerfish, they have on the back of their head a spiny pad. It's evolved from the dorsal fin, the spiny dorsal fin. It is very rough. If you think of a, uh, a wire pot cleaner, pot cleaner. scrubber, scrubber scale, scale, it has that it has sort of that texture. Protected. It can't be very nice. They, they stick, stick themselves with this, like a gecko's finger. finger. They stick they themselves with this onto the dolphin or the turtle or the tuna. And it can't be very comfortable. Indeed, Indeed they, 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 they can leave they can wings where they're stuck, stuck on. Uh, on this uh, one, this you can see like the like footprint. Uh, this is uh, the well. This is, well, this is a mark left, left by a small remorse stuck, stuck on. on. And, and it really can't be very comfortable. 
And you think we think of the dolphins as friendly, as friendly and altruistic things, 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 Calculate, they can generate up to seven times the acceleration of the gravity. So the little son of a he's caught on a wave, flung off. Flung off. Now, now, I have to say, when I first noticed, I was scared. It doesn't sound bad. However, if you see dolphins bow riding, so where's the boat? There's a boat going along, there's dolphins, they go along, pressure waves in the boat. It's like underwater surfing dolphins, as you know, come in, come in, push to a boat, and they love it. And you look down and spin it off, you probably won't see a sucker fish or a mole. You might see one in 10, 20, 30, 30. But thanks to the wonderful technology and digital cameras, now we can take pictures of dolphins jumping and spinning. But if you do, and this one is not the best one. Uh, they, they always do it in a distance. But this one, if you see, he's got his two, two fins sticking out. He's got his dorsal fin. And under his belly, he's got a little thing sticking out. That's a remora hanging on for dear life. If you take pictures of remoras spinning, oh, sorry, of spinning off in spinning, about one in four has, has sucker fish on So far more, far more than roughly one in 40, if you see the barrel. Like so ten times as many ones in spinning. Now, you never catch the first spin because so he may have thrown it off in the first one. So I think it's pretty good evidence that this is one reason why it's been off in the spin. Moving on, another species, another very common species of dolphin. This is the spotted dolphin. Spotted dolphin. The full name is the hand-spotted dolphin. It's the first of all around the topic. Uh, there is uh, there a is Atlantic and spotted dolphin, so on, but the pan trumpet is the one that occurs in the Maldives. Uh, and the first thing to say about it is it is not very spotted. Uh, the name was given by American scientists, and in the Pacific, where they worked, the subspecies there has a lot of spots. It's very oh, obviously it's spotted. It's spotted. In the tropical in the Indian Ocean, Indian it should it have, have a very straight freckled dolphin. dolphin. There's a few, a few spots few in the dolphin. dolphin. But the characteristics of it is very similar in size to a spinner dolphin, slightly larger. But the dark dark cape, the bit on the back that's pigmented to protect itself from the bottom of the sun, comes very deep in size. So it makes it very dark. It appears very dark with a pale face. And this dark appearance gives it one of its Maldivian native names, the color for us. Black dolphin in Divinity. The fish will recognize it. Uh, and uh, and, and, uh, and if you have them again, if you have close to power riding, on the left is a uh, spinner dolphin, and you can see the pale, pale grey on the flanks, uh, but on the spotted dolphin, the mother and calf on your right, the dark expends all the way down the sides, just leaving a little bit of pale face. Uh, so that's the Calucormas. It has another attribute to which the fishermen recognize when they jump and they come shooting out of the water, and it looks like they're going to do a fantastic Olympian style head first, rear and rear out of it. No, they come up to the apex of the jump, and they go and they go and they flop. And this gives them the other Maldivian name, which is Barkos, Barkos. And this can be seen a long way away. The way they jump is characteristic for this dolphin. The fishermen recognize this, and they're looking out for it. Uh, because it's important for fisheries. fisheries. Now, now, traditionally, traditionally it is a course, course, you know, you know, you know, fish for tuna. tuna. And the main fishery for centuries has been pole and line fishing for mainly skipjack tuna. Uh, but in recent decades, hand line fishing has also developed for yellowfin tuna. Uh, and you'll be very familiar with uh, yellowfin, Canelli. Uh, and this commands a premium price, so fishermen are on the lookout for yellowfin and yellowfin tuna associate with spotted dolphins. No one's quite sure why, oh, why? Uh, but they uh, do. They do. Uh, throughout uh, throughout much of the of the ocean. Ocean. So, so fishermen around, around the world, the world certainly the dolphins are on the yeah, lookout look for, for spotted dolphins. dolphins. And the way they jump gives them away even at a distance, uh, and they close in, and with simple hand lines, they can catch the yellowfin tuna. Fantastic fishery. And I'm going to come back to fisheries, fisheries uh, themes, uh, themes in a minute. In a minute. Uh, uh, first, first of all, 
just to just briefly mention that. one other one other species of dolphin. There are several species of dolphin in the Maldives. Just to mention one more. This is striped dolphin, another common offshore active species of dolphin, uh, and. I don't think it shows particularly well on the, the, the screen here, yeah. uh, but on the uh, original, original picture. picture. Uh, on the original uh, on the picture, picture, the belly is pink, 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 pink. And this is uh, one of the species that you should know as a highly widespread pink belly dolphin. And it's not pigmented, it's not a pink color, so the belly is very white. However, However, sometimes, sometimes pick now we, now we, you may have thought of whales. whales. If you think of whales in uh, cold climates, we often think of whales in the Antarctic or, or maybe in the maybe Arctic Ocean. Uh, and these uh, are big and animals, big animals, and they have thick clays of blubber to eat more. The main, the main issue, issue for, for warm-blooded warm mammals, mammals in the cold, in the cold, cold regions, regions is to eat more. Eat more. It helps it you have a thick layer of fat, blubber, and it helps you feel larger. The larger you are, Relatively relative speaking, speaking, your surface area is smaller. smaller. So you generate, so you generate heat by your muscles, your muscles your volume, your volume, but you dissipate it through, through your surface, through the surface area. And of course, as you all know, know, area increases by the square, square of your length. Your length. But volume, volume increases by the cube. cube. So, so as you get longer, longer, your volume increases much more rapidly than your surface area. So you generate more heat. Relative to the average, average. So, so the cold climate makes sense, sense to be big, big. and well and into it. But in the Maldives, the warm equatorial the Maldives, warm bloody creatures have a different problem, and, different and problem. that is how to keep it cool. cool. And cetaceans, active dolphins, and striped dolphins are particularly active, charging the ocean. They're generating heat, they're burning and they're generating heat. Uh, and they can uh, sweat like that, they can't sweat, 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 they can't an interesting, interesting sideline side like this. I mentioned, I mentioned that the warm top in the cold, cold polar water is paste big, 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 so it helps so you to observe it. The other side of the is in the warm top water, it is paste is smaller, smaller because your because surface area is relatively, relatively larger, larger compared to your body, so you radiate more heat compared to the body temperature. And in fact, and indeed, the Maldives and dolphins, dolphins whales, whales are in the Maldives are small, small compared to other areas. So, so the spinner so dolphin, dolphin typically can be about 5 foot long, 5 foot long, 5 foot long, 5 foot long, 5 At the northern extremity of this range, which is in the Pacific, is the Hawaiian Islands, the top of the Hawaiian Islands, lock cool water, they get up to 7 foot long. So a little bit bigger. And I'll mention the blue whale later. This blue whale here is the smallest blue whale in the world. Related to related temperature, temperature. Uh, and this uh, is a simple for the, for the students here. Students here. Take, note. Take note, this is, uh, this is a, a biological rule of thumb, 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 known as the Berg rule, first, uh, first uh, expounded by the German by Germans Germans 50, 50 years ago, years ago. Uh, uh, and is that warm, warm blooded creatures, creatures with wide with ranges, ranges, those in cold climates tend to be bigger than those in open climates. So this is an example. Maldivian whales and dolphins provide an example of the Berg rule. It's only a rule of thumb, there's always a bar, there's, there's exceptions, but it's a good thing. Now, now the Maldives, the Maldives you know where the Maldives are, uh, uh, this is just to remind, remind us that the Maldives is round, 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 the rim, rim, the Indian Ocean, around the rim, around the rim, around the rim of the Indian Ocean, a large number of other countries, highly populated countries, densely populated countries, with large fishing populations. So, in Arabia, Yemen, Yemen, many big fishing countries. Iran, Iran, Pakistan, Pakistan India, India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia. Indonesia. These are very, very, very large fishing countries. Enormous numbers of fishermen, enormous numbers of fishermen, and they're all going, they're all going on the tuna. tuna. Same as Same the Indians. But they don't they have a line, 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 Technique for fishing, they do 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 they they go out in small, can small, be bigger, can be small boats, and they set out the gill net. Gill net, gill net. Gill net. Gill imagine a tennis net, but slightly it's larger. Like so, so, in the case in of a boat like this, it might be two or three kilometers long, but the bigger boats can have gill nets up to 20 kilometers long, and they may be five meters or 10 or 
12 meters deep. So enormous W of A to make use of one of those. Uh, but you sit down in the evening, and you pour it in the evening, but pays it out in a long line, just a straight line, and fish are not too long, they get caught, 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 they get caught by their gills, hence gilding. Fantastic. And you don't need bait. That's a plus point. You don't need any sophisticated gear. You just need a couple of small guys who are ready to pull the net in in the morning. Very easy. So it's very, very popular. There are hundreds of thousands of fishermen relying on gill net fishing in the waters all around the mountain, not in the waters all around the mountain. Fantastic. However, however, they catch other things as well. They catch cattle, of course. They catch sharks. And they catch cetaceans. They catch whales and dolphins. But this is the humpback whale. In a tangled in the gill net. Photographed by a colleague of mine, a British guy working in Oman. This animal was fortunate. The team who, who spotted it were able to cut it free. Uh, otherwise, it would have died a slow uh, and painful death, no doubt. Uh, big whales certainly get caught in gill nets around the Indian Ocean. But in much greater numbers, small dolphins do too. And this is a spinner dolphin caught off Sri Lanka. Uh, and when a dolphin gets caught in a gill net, it thrashes about trying to free itself. And the flukes get really tangled. Uh, so it's very typical to find ones with the flukes cut off. Because when the fishermen pull the net, it's so entangled, they can't disentangle it. They just chop the flukes off to make it easy. Uh, and in many countries, including Sri Lanka and India, for example, they have quite strict wildlife laws rightly so, uh, which mean that you cannot legally land. You've caught the thing. It's dead, but you can't land it. Uh, so it's just very often just thrown over the side, and, and in this case, washed up on, on a beach. This is a huge issue, uh, uh, not so much directly in the Maldives, indirectly, but not directly. Uh, but around the Indian Ocean, an enormous number of cetaceans are being killed by gill nets. There are other issues, but this is probably the big one. Uh, and with colleagues, and, and no one had an idea of exactly how many, but with colleagues uh, from Maldives, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, and Indonesia, uh, we put together the small amount of data that's available, uh, which is summarized here. And this is over a period of 30 or so years. These are small samples, relatively small samples of gillnet fisheries, uh, where fisheries biologists have counted the number of dolphins being caught, landed before it was illegal, and also the amount of tuna. So how many dolphins per 100 tons of tuna? And you can see that over a period of time, it's decreasing. This is really little more than the back of the envelope calculation. Uh, but if you multiply up the numbers and we know how much tuna is being caught, uh, then you can see that at its peak, uh, over 100,000, 100,000 small cetaceans, dolphins, were being caught every year by these fisheries. The number's going down because the populations are going down. It's probably 80, 70 or 80,000 now. And if you add it up over the years, uh, this fishery, these fisheries have caught over 4 million, 4 million small cetaceans, small, 4 million dolphins, pulled out of the Indian Ocean by these fisheries. To give you just some idea, in the entire, entire 20th century, commercial whaling carried out by big industrial countries, the Soviet Union, Japan, UK, USA, all of the commercial fisheries of the entire world for the entire 20th century caught an estimated 2.9 million whales, 3 million whales. And this fishery has taken 4 million, and it's still going on. So this is a very serious issue uh, that is, really hasn't been addressed yet. So maybe some of, some of you can uh, address it in the future. It is an important issue. I mentioned humpback whales earlier. There was one caught in that net. Uh, they do occur in the Maldives. Uh, here's one with the humpback. Uh, and underwater here, you can see long fins. The scientific name for this one is Megaptera novi angliae. Megaptera means mega aptera, long wings, big wings, as indeed it does have. Um, they are occasionally caught in gill nets, and they do occur in the Maldives. Not very often, uh, but they do occur. Uh, and again, with colleagues from across the region, uh, I've been able to compile records of humpback whales. This is from southern India. Sri Lanka, Maldives, and the Chagos Archipelago, south of here. Okay, it's not a huge amount of data, but this is a lot of this is from uh, social media. I'll come back to that. But you can see extremely peaks, 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 so two peaks, two peaks, peaks, peaks. Uh, one at the turn of the year, December, January, February, maybe into March, and then there's a second peak, July, August, September, October, and these represent two separate populations. And in Maldives, if we go now to the a map, and these are the two seasons. 
Uh, on the left, December to March, this is essentially the season now. Here and the right, right, the green one. Green one. Uh, this uh, is in the line with the southwest. Side. Side. And these, and these are two are different two populations. populations. Uh, the ones uh, the ones in, red, in red, red, and these are actually coming down, down, down from, the from the north. These are Arabian, Arabian sea whales. There's a small population, a small population that's sent off from Oman. Uh, uh, and in this season, northeast monsoon season, 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 they spread out from the south and south and north. I say south, used to come to the The last record was only 20 years ago. A lot of this is on social media. Tourists, fishermen, posting stuff online, video, photos. There's a lot more people with smart smart cameras 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 smartphones now, a lot more tourists, a lot more fishermen equipped with these things, and yet there's not been a single record of these uh, in the northeast monsoon season for 20 years. And the reason is, I believe, the population is crashing. The population was hunted by sea in the 60s, it's never recovered. Because of gill and fishing, they get caught in gill nets, and they go. And the numbers are now continuing to decline. In contrast, right these are these southwest West Indian Ocean Indian Indian and Antarctic rocks. They feed in the southern in southern Indian 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 and they come all the way to the it's quite a story. And that population is also fed by commercial whaling and that population is very public. And these ones are now coming to the Maldives. And to give some idea of scale, here's the Maldives centered in the middle of this chart of the Indian Ocean. Up off Oman, up off Arabia, the, the colors in the ocean are plankton, false, false, image, uh, false colors for the distribution of plankton. A lot of plankton there in the southwest monsoon season, uh, and that's where they feast, the Arabian sea ones. But that's, that's also, also where, where Oman, 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 Iran, Iran, Iran Pakistan, Pakistan, Iran, Iran, Iran do a lot of fishing. Lot of so they're having a lot of time. In contrast, in contrast the ones the ones in the ocean, 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 a long, long way, away. away. They come up with Madagascar, Mauritius, Reunion, Seychelles, and a few of them reach the Maldives. But the numbers are increasing, so it's quite possible that in the future uh, there'll be regular uh, sightings of humpback whales in southern Maldives every, every year. And this, and this image, image, I hope, gives you some idea of the scale, 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 scale of what's going on. Maldives sometimes you think of living in a small island, a little bit insular, looking inwards. But if you're a marine organism, the Maldives is really the centre of an enormous ocean, and many of these animals. Big ones, big ones, the well, birds, 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 birds traveling right 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 uh, uh, using different parts of it different seasons. Which brings me to the final and largest one to speak about tonight, which is the blue whale. Blue whale. Blue whale. It occurs, it does occur in the Maldives. And if you're in any doubt, here we have here we have one caught in the act, uh, just near Hulamali, coming to see the new constructions, inspecting his new home. Um, Blue whales are the largest animals that have ever lived. The largest one. If you have a guidebook about whales, they'll tell you they've got they got to 33 meters long. That's uh, 110, 110 kilometers long. Uh, but that's uh, like that's saying cubes get up to 8 foot, whatever it is. Tall. Tall. We, we, we know, know that there are people that are people that are people that are people that are don't see very many. So too with whales. Most of them are small. The Antarctic ones typically get up to 27 meters long, 90 feet long. The Maldivian ones are ones that here up to about 80 feet long. 24 still in the audience. This is larger than that of the largest type of dinosaurs. This one is longer. There's a nematean worm. It's about 40 meters long. But it's very thick. It doesn't weigh much. It's not quite in the same league as the blue whale. Blue whale is very large. 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 Uh, this is sightings. This is from quite a few years ago. There's more data now. It confirms the pattern. This is sightings of blue whales in the Maldives. And you can see, again, there were two peaks, December, January, uh, and again in April. And none seen during June, July, August, September at this time. So June, July, August, September, this is southwest monsoon season. Hulangu. Hulangu. Charter, 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 Spend a few minutes in Flanker uh, and then come back and through Maldives again. Now, I would say I'm going to make a slight digression here. This information here and the information on the humpbacks is simply a compilation of sightings, records of the current blue whales, humpback whales in the Maldives. 
a lot of it on social media. Anybody can see it's out there. And when I say it, it's right even that. Now, when we think about science, when we think about church, maybe we think about being expensive and people think about the whole color scope, the large and wide, and all these things that are out of our reach. But actually, science is not the same as that. Because if you think about it, it's not just about the whole color scope, it's about the whole color scope. But actually, science is not the same as that. Because if you think about it, it's not just about the whole color scope, it's about the whole color scope. But actually, science is not the same as that. Because if you think about it, it's not just about the whole color scope, if you're curious, you're curious, if you're interested in something, and you get yourself you a little bit organized, in other words, write it, write it down. down. And next time, next you, time you see it, write that, write that one down. Then over a period of years, you will end up with a set of, a set of data, data that sheds light, that shows a pattern, pattern, as it did for the Humboldt ones, and it did for the Middle ones. You don't have to have hundreds of millions, it's very nice to have hundreds of millions of dollars behind you to have it, but you don't need it. The core, the core of science, of science is, curiosity is curiosity and, and consistent, consistent organized data collection. And, and, and that will lead to all sorts of, of insights. In, 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 in the case of the world, they pass they through, through from Arabia, Arabia, Arabia in December, January. January. Uh, uh, very uh, often, no scientists around Mali at that time of year. There's fewer than February, March, and they come back again in April and May. And to just test this, I was told to be able to go to Sri Lanka. And the southern bottom of Sri Lanka is a lighthouse, the Dondra House Lighthouse. Uh, and looking out to sea from there, uh, I was able to see for the first time in 2007, looking out offshore, within 10 minutes I could see blue whales blowing, which is extraordinary. I have, to, I have to, thousands of scientific fish from blue whales very familiar with this, uh, uh, nobody else, else. Um, and this and has led to, to the development of the, the, the very valuable uh, uh, well whales well well of Marissa in, in the, the south coast. coast. Offshore. So blue whales are the largest animal that they live. They live in all the waters. They pass through all the waters. They're here. I think this should, I hope, this should excite your interest in, in the whales and dolphins of the Maldives. And with that, I'm going to end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, um, and, and for the students, for the students if you're interested, if you're interested everybody else will look away. Uh, the students, uh, there are some references. references. If you, if you are inspired to delve a little deeper, deeper. Uh, take a snapshot of that. And you're welcome to ask me any questions later. But for the moment, does anybody have any questions? This, this one here. This one here. Yeah, the question yeah, the was, question was uh, is there any uh, hydrophobic uh, acoustic uh, research going uh, on? And the short answer is no, not yet. yet. Uh, uh, yes, it's yes, it's obviously it's whales and dolphins, they produce sounds. Um, and, and the sounds are sound sound specific, specific uh, and they can uh, yield a lot of insight to what's around the ground, like the shape of the shape of the There are research activities going on, which I'm hoping will continue in the long as well. Uh, there's also uh, long-term long -term monitoring, monitoring um, um, the International the Test Ban Treaty, treaty. So, that so that the International Ban on Nuclear Weapons, weapons testing, 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 testing in order to monitor this, it's rather strange, rather strange it's in order to monitor, monitor, monitor and make sure that countries aren't exploding nuclear weapons, 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 weapons they're not. They're not. They're 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 but yes, it's important to know that ideally should be expanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you all very much.